Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphanim. Let's begin here with this article on you. Today, I hope you're all having a good week. Weekend. <laughs> I'm going to say a week. <laughs> big shout out to Akuma. Big shout out to Asti, Matthew, Ahmed, Corey. Let's begin right here. This article is titled XRP based hedge fund filed with SEC raises new expectations. You don't say every every once in a while we have new higher expectations for XRP. Listen, I put XRP all the way at the top. I expect wonderful things out of everything XRP based, but that's just my opinion. Let's scroll down here. All right. Everything's still looking good. All right. As you know, you already know that you, you see all the good news. So let's scroll down here. All right. So it says here, Patrick L. Riley, CEO of Reaper Financial. Ooh, I like that name. It's tough. I like it. Has hinted at an exciting development for XRP. He stated on Twitter that Arrington Capital, we're very familiar with them, a digital asset management firm and blockchain based capital markets founded in 2017, has recently filed with the SEC. Oh, boy, the SEC. For an XRP based hedge fund. Let's go do it. All right. I know <laughs> I'm trying to throw out there every every uh exciting phrase that I can, but um this is real good stuff here. So let's scroll down here past a whole lot of things. Once again, go to you dot today to read this article. It says read the full article. It says Riley adds a piece of good news. Quote, there is an expectation for all to go well. Unquote. That's interesting. Quote, Arrington recently filed with the SEC for an XRP based hedge fund. Seems there is an expectation for all to go well, unquote. Why, why did they? They did it twice. They said what? He, I'm always going to complain about this. Why do they do that? It's, it's in the row. Read the article. You're going to see. And then if, if you're like me, you're going to question why do they have to write that twice? Arrington's website mentions, <laughs> quote, Arrington XRP Capital, unquote, which is a multi-strategy hedge fund. Investing in early stage of venture and public markets. Hedge fund pulls investors money and invest it in hopes of making a positive return, which obviously in the future, given everything that's going on right now. And if you see the mass push for CBDCs, the mass push that not only the banks are making, the governments are making, uh, uh, Ripple is making. You see how many countries Ripple is attempting to work with? And I'm pretty sure they they have that secured and you have memorandums of understanding and such or else they wouldn't be talking about it. Then you understand that gluing these systems together and how much capital can flow through XRP, possibly. OK, there's no guarantees, but possibly everything's looking good, by, by the way, at this point. Then you understand where that price can go. There's no reason that all of these banks would get involved. All of these governments would get involved. They're on all of these top panels. And on top of that, who was it the other day? It was someone. Was it the IMF was talking about uh, interoperability? And like, there was one of the big banks in some document. My apologies. I read so many documents. Uh, and they were talking about the lack of interoperability. And I was saying, yes, this this is what I've been saying. They need something to glue all the systems together. Now, when you're talking interoperability, we're talking in a multipolar world. So BRICS Nation is going to have to have something to connect them to to uh, the West and the West to the BRICS Nations. Right. Right in the middle. But anyway, I've been saying that for a long time. But there was so, there was a, some I should have saved. it. I know. My apologies. But there was some big bank. And there was a company that was speaking about that. And it was beautiful to hear them actually admit that. So we're in a great position right now to be a bridge currency, to have liquidity at all times. Listen, they don't have liquidity. I keep saying this. Did you see the article we covered in one of the last videos or did I post it in the members only section? I can't remember. Anyway, um, and it was talking about how the banks are still receiving bailouts right now. They have what a hundred billion dollars in bailouts last week. They accessed. They're not doing well. We're in the driver's seat. It's just a matter of time before people see it. it's probably going to take a couple more of them and buy a couple. Let's go beyond a couple. They have over 900 banks at risk. Let's be serious here. A lot of them are under pressure. Commercial real estate hasn't come down and hit them with the macho man elbow just yet, but it may. And when it does, unfortunately, that's unfortunately. That's something that looks like is going to happen. You have even Jay Clayton talking about it. You have uh, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen talking about it. So when that elbow, that macho man elbow comes down on the banking industry, firstly, it's great for the new financial system. That's number one. Number two, and it's going to speed up the timeline, by the way. 
because they're going to need the new financial system. Those little banks are going to get crushed if they don't acquiesce to the new financial system, adopting XRP, XLM, these types of things. Okay, Algorand, whichever one, doesn't matter to me. I win if any of them pop off. But so this, that's good for them. Secondly, it's great for gold and gold holders. Those of us who sit on a ton of gold, the people are going to initially retreat to gold just like they did before. They showed you what they're going to do. They retreated to gold and gold shot up. Remember where it was when we were covering it last year? Well, we're coming off of all time highs right now. So it's also great for gold. So, hey, I'm all for it. But dude, we have to be able to make money in every possible way. When the markets are good, we have to be able to make money. When the markets are bad, we have to have ways to make money. So that's how I look at it. I'm trying to make money on the, from the top and the bottom and going up and coming down. It don't make, make a difference. So that's just my personal mentality. All right. So that's why I look for certain caveats. I look for certain scenarios. And in these scenarios, sure, there is some negative aspects to it. If people are completely exposed just to those systems, but there's a great positive aspect as well. If you're prepared, boom. So back to this article here. So some hedge fund managers may not be required to register or file public reports with the SEC, depending on the number of assets in the hedge funds advised by the manager. According to an SEC investor guide, hedge funds are exempt fr uh, from some of the regulations, quote, intended to protect investors, unquote. We're going to stop right there. Once again, you want to read the rest of that article. Great, great stuff today on you dot today. So now we're going to go on to this next article here. Hey, man, shout out to everybody who's been putting in a lot of hard work, by the way. I want to show you some love and respect. If you've been in the gym working hard and I see a lot of the people saying they've been in there working hard. You've been maintaining your mind. You've been uh, uh, meditating. You've been turning off the TV, the Internet, even. And giving yourself a break from, you know, if, if, if there's too much drama going on and such like that in the world and giving your mind a break, keeping your mind healthy then shout out to you because you are a special individual. All right. So now we're going to go to this article here it's from finbold.com. They've been doing a great job over there. Make sure you check them out. This article is titled XRP price prediction. Oh, we got more price predictions. Let's see what they're talking about for 2023, 2024, 2025. Oh, they're going in their bag with this one. All right. Let's scroll down here. Let's see. Let's see if they're going to be conservative. Do, do they believe in the, the higher prices of XRP? Let's find out. So it says here. I'm trying to scroll. I'm scrolling past a lot of things here. I want to get right to the crux of it. it says, if XRP follows the trajectory of the Internet, it could trade at 62 cents in 2024. That is very, very conservative. And I know that's not taking into account if we defeat the SEC. And right now, everything's looking good. If we defeat the SEC, there's no way you're, you're predicting that's going to be 62 cents. There's no way. No way. It's going to fly. In my humble opinion. I could be completely wrong, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. There's no way 62 cents. It's flying. Be it's going to fly past a dollar when we crush the SEC. Because You know why? Not only companies going to be jumping in. And yeah, there will be a lot of profit taking, but not only companies going to jump in. But not a lot of non-believers. They, they don't believe now, but they believe in money. They don't believe in XRP, but they believe in making money. They're going to come in. We've seen it before. Haven't we seen it before? Oh, they all hated Cardano. Remember that they hated Cardano, one of our original original utility coins. And what happened when Cardano started to pop off? They all came in and then it boosted that price up. Yeah, sure. They took profit. I took profit. But they stepped in. All of a sudden, they didn't hate Cardano anymore. Right? Algorand. Remember Algorand in the beginning? They all hated Algorand. Oh, Alphanim is trash. Remember that? When Algorand was at a low price, what happened? All of a sudden, Algorand's price started to go up. Oh, significantly. And then they didn't hate Algorand anymore. You were in the forums and stuff like that. You saw what they were saying. All of a sudden, everybody was buying Algorand. And then what happened? It exploded three or four times. Then they didn't hate Algorand anymore. Same thing might happen. Might. No guarantees. With XRP. Oh, they hate XRP now. When XRP starts to pop off, they love money more than they hate XRP. Mark my words. They'll get in. And yeah, sure, it'll be a little boost. It's not going to be much, but it'll be enough for people to scrape some profits. Sure. This is not what we're looking for later. That's just one of that's just the first flood. That's all it is. The first flood. I'm looking for the tsunami, but don't but make no mistake about it. It will be fun when that first flood comes in. It's flying past a dollar. Anyway, let's keep going here. 
says it could trade at 62 cents in 2024 conservative and potentially reach 80 cents by 2025 ultra conservative. Ultra conservative. We win that SEC case by the time 25, 2025 hits. I expect it to be way past two, three dollars, five dollars even. Right then, it's gonna at that point, we defeat the SEC. At that point, it's all about the partnerships and announcements and banks using it. It's all about that wholesale bridge currency liquidity aspect and how much is flowing at that time. And, and I believe Ripple is hungry. Volante is hungry. And it's even said to be other companies. I'm not going to elaborate on that. That's a little touchy right now. There's other companies waiting to jump in and use XRP separate from Ripple and Volante. So even they could be feasting on XRP. So it's all about those catalysts. R- catalyst, catalyst, catalyst. Charts are beautiful. Charts are beautiful. But at that point, the catalysts take over. The partnerships, the utility takes over. And there has never been assets. Never like XRP, XLM. Algorand, Quant, never. We haven't seen anything yet. I know I'm moving my arms around a lot. Sorry about that. I'm fired up. I was exercising earlier. I get fired up when I exercise. I was also shooting some hoops earlier. Oh, I'm nice. Oh, yeah, I'm st- I still got it. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I just feel like fired up. Anyway, so he said, as they say, 80 cents by 2025, it says up 66% from current valuation. Okay, says if it mimics the growth of Google, it could be valued at 91 cents in 2024. All right. All right. um, Okay, I still think it'll be way beyond that. It just it all depends on the SEC case partnerships. Regulatory clarity. Different catalysts, right? They all kind of intersect, but uh, different catalysts. But they say 91 cents in 2024. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I would like to see that. You guys know I see the comments, right? Even though there's some weird stuff going in the comments. I don't know if people see my comments sometimes. Sometimes people make a comment. It disappears. That's not me. Why? See, I I don't. And and also be careful sometimes clicking on like some bot comments to get rid of them. Because my one time I clicked on something, it completely glitched everything. It glitched my. That's all I say about that. I had to be on the line with YouTube for like uh, um, we were on. We were I was talking to YouTube for like maybe an hour to try to get it solved. Then I had to go through email to get my uh, account um, corrected, right? So anyway, <laughs> minus all of that, I love to see the comments in the comment section and pe- hear people's opinions, right? Be- There's so many powerful opinions. We have a lot of brilliant minds in there, uh, like Dr. Slimeball, Keith, uh, Old Man Crypto. Like these individuals are brilliant. Akuma, these people are brilliant. Uh, and there's so many. Corey, there's so many people. So, so when typically when people leave comments in the comment section, it's very potent. All right. So anyway, 91 cents in 2024, it says, and potentially hit a dollar 42 in 2025, super conservative. So that, that's unbelievable, but I respect it. That's their opinion. Okay. All right. A growth of almost 200%. Alternatively, if XRP mirrors the tra- trajectory of Meta. It could potentially reach a dollar eighty three. Okay, now you're starting to play. <laughs> now you're starting to talk my language a little, a little bit, a little bit. Speak my language a little bit. All my papers, my documents fell. I knocked them off the table. It says uh, you probably couldn't hear it. I have this microphone here is a noise canceling microphone. So yeah, I know my my thoughts are all over the place today, but we're getting to the crux of it, and hopefully you're a little bit entertained. So a dollar eighty three by twenty twenty four. All right, and four four dollars and eight cents by twenty twenty five. Okay, now you're getting a little bit more respectable. Now, I don't know, starting to make me like you a little bit. <laughs> you're starting to make me like you just just a, a wee bit, Finbol, a wee bit. So finally, for mobile growth, XRP could be valued at sixty one cents in twenty twenty four. See, now you start making me not like you again. No, I always like you, Finbol. I'm kidding, <laughs> but you get what I'm. You get what the energy I'm conveying. And 78 cents in 2025, if it took a similar path. Okay, well, let's hope it goes the pathway of meta. You can't, because there's no way you compare Google, meta. Listen, sure, they, they're revolutionary, but they played off the backs of something else. What we're looking to do with wholesale CBDCs has never been done before. 
before at that scale. We're talking trillions of dollars that could possibly be moved. There's nothing like it. Google didn't do that. You had Yahoo, Alta Vista. You had, uh, what was the other one? Was Yahoo, Alta Vista. It was another one with a funny name. Was it? I can't remember. But you had a lot of search engines before that took off before Google. AOL, was AOL also a search engine? I don't remember. Um, Meta played off the back of MySpace. Uh, 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 Black Planet, Mihente.com, like all of these thing, things existed before Meta to give it a base. Th so there, it was done before. N there's never been anything like the bank coins. Listen, some people may say, you're wrong, Alphanim. I can respect that. But remember the crux of why I say that. Trillions of dollars possibly moving through them. These companies never had that possibility. Quad, listen, remember the trillion scale into quadrillions. If the game is played correctly, if everything goes according to plan. Just my humble opinion. You can disagree. I'm perfectly fine with that. Disagree all you want. I'm perfectly fine with it. I'm comfortable with it. But that's just my humble opinion. So now, all right, we're going to leave it there. I know there's like, holy smokes, this is crazy. They have charts. There's a lot more here. So if you want to read the rest of that, finbold.com. Once again, it's titled XRP Price Prediction for 2023, 2024, and 2025. Let's move on. We only got through two articles. I have so many more articles here. So what I'm going to do, I probably will just make a separate members only video and then put that out in the morning. So now, this article here is from CryptoRank.io, and it is titled, XRP could have an incredible, incredible July. This is what they're saying. I might even make that the title of the video, and then people will, I don't know why, some people don't understand the titles of the video. I try to make them as close to the name of an article as I possibly can. Um, so now, it says, Ripple XRP earned itself a spot on CoinMarketCap's trending list after it saw a more than 3% increase in its price over the past 24 hours of trading. This left the remittance token trading at 48 cents at press time. Furthermore, technical indicators on the altcoins daily charts uh, suggested that July could be a good month for the altcoins price. We've heard a lot of people say this. I also keep in mind that a lot of the lawyers said that it could be, no, not the lawyers. It was one lawyer plus the, the former individual from the sec was it i think it was the former individual from the sec that said we have maybe days to weeks before the case might be over now that's just an opinion but it's something i keep in the back of my mind all right so it says from a technical perspective xrp's price had printed three higher lows over the past month as a result a bullish ascending triangle chart pattern formed on xrp's daily chart the latest low was printed on Friday and the remittance tokens price has been in a mini upward trend since then. Over the past 24 hours, XRP was able to break the 50 day and 20 day EMA lines, but retraced to trade back below the two technical indicators at press time. The altcoins price closing today's trading. Oh, and then they cut it off a little bit. So this is one of those things where you got to click. You got to click through to get to the original article here. But what we're getting from this, and they have a nice chart at the top here, is that things are looking good for XRP. This chart makes it look very, very good, actually. Very, very good. So anyway, that's on CryptoRank.io. They're pretty much saying July could be explosive. And listen, every day, in my opinion, could be explosive for XRP. You just never know. It's one of those coins that could go off at any time. That's how I personally feel. Even though most people will come and say it hasn't gone off yet. It hasn't gone off in a long time. That doesn't change the nature that it could go off at any time. All it takes is that announcement. Hey, Ripple defeated the SEC. Boom. We're in the game. We're playing. Put on your jersey. Put on your shoes. It's time to pass and shoot the ball. It's time. You know, that's how I look at it. Right. That's how I look at it. It's, uh, I think a, a few of the bank coins are like that. They could take off at any time. Quant is another one. You never know what's going to happen with Quant. I love Quant, by the way. Oh, yeah. Quant has a beautiful future. That's how I feel. Not financial advice, right? <laughs> I have to always say that. I need to just write a, a disclaimer for that. I'll, I'll get to that, right? Um, so now let's move on to another article here. All right. So now this is interesting, right? 
This is also from you dot today, and it is titled XRP community ablaze really with fake rumors of Gensler's possible resignation. I wouldn't know. Uh, I'm not online often. The only time I get on Twitter really is to do research. And then I, I uh, also communicate with a lot of the members only section, you know, that communicates with me through Twitter. Uh, but other than that, I have no idea what's going on. I try to keep my mind focused on research and then relaxation than other business ventures I have. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. Let's find out what's going on. The XRP community is awash with blatantly, okay, blatantly fake rumors of the impending resignation of Securities and Exchange Commission Chair Gensler. Well, there's been a lot of talk about, wasn't it, isn't there senators and congressmen trying to push for the removal of Gary Gensler? And then there was someone else. Oh, yeah, that's right. Jay Clayton, isn't it? Jay Clayton has been going very hard against Gary Gensler as well. So, I mean, I'm sure that some of this might be based on that type of energy, right? So let's, let's see what's going on here. It says prominent XRP accounts like documenting Ripple have been, like documenting Ripple, okay, have been instrumental in circulating the unconfirmed news. Is that the name of somebody or did they make a glitch? Maybe they removed the name of the individual. Not that it's important at all. What's important is the actual information. It says Gensler assumed the role of chair in 2020, April 2021. All right. Let's skip. Let's skip that piece. It says despite the swirling rumors, Gensler's resignation seems highly unlikely. Wait, so you can't confirm that he's not going to re going to uh, uh, resign? Wait, let me scroll back to the top to that part I skipped. His tenure has seen a deep focus on burgeoning crypto market. Okay, he served on a, C a, a CFTC. All right, so you're not telling me that. You have confirmed that he's not resigning. So you're saying that they have these blatant rumors that he's resigning. That's unconfirmed. But you also have having confirmed that he's not resigning. All right. That's a little bit strange in my humble opinion. I'm just staying neutral right in the middle. Whether he does or not, I just want to defeat the SEC and let's get to that bank money. That's I'm staying focused on that bank money. Let's defeat the SEC. I don't care what happens to Gensler. Defeat them. Let's move on. Get to that bank money. We have things to do. So it says, despite the swirling rumors, okay, highly unlikely, his tenure so far has been marked by a distinct push for robust crypto regulations. I think the problem is there hasn't been any regulations and that he stated that he doesn't feel there needs to be anything new added, that they can go by what is already law, even though they're not going by what's law and there's no clarity and they haven't told companies what they need to comply with. I think that is that was the actual issue. It says, and bringing more transparency to the market. What? Oh, he didn't ask for a whole lot of transparency from FTX and Sam Bankman Free, who he sat down with in multiple meetings. I'm just putting that out there. I, I don't. I just respectfully do not disagree. Do not agree with that. <laughs> it's a task that is far from complete. Does this person like Gary Gensler? Maybe this is a pro SEC person writing this article. I could be wrong. But this is very strange. As per historical precedent, no SEC chair has resigned. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that a precedent can't be set now before a precedent is set before there is a first time. There was nothing, right? So this can happen this time. Just because it hasn't happened before doesn't mean it can't happen now is what I'm trying to say. If I didn't convey that eloquently. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm just saying it's, there, there is the possibility it could happen. There's a first time for everything. No SEC chair has resigned within the first two years of their tenure. All right. Making Gensler's supposed departure even more dubious. I like the wording, dubious, right? Um, who, uh, you know, who, you know, who it was that I first heard that word used by? It was in the old Transformers cartoon. You all remember the movie from 1985, Transformers, the movie, the cartoon, and uh, Unicron in that movie. He, um, he's speaking to, to uh, what was the bad guy's name? The evil Transformer. What was his name? He turned into Galvatron. Anyway. He was speaking to that character and he was telling him that his posture, his posturing was very dubious. I'll never forget it. And then back then, my father, um, my father was always big on, on intellect and developing intellect. So he would give me a lot of different books to read when I was younger and he would give you a dictionary. There was a scientific dictionary and there was a regular dictionary and tell you to read the dictionary. That's right. Cover to cover. And I just remember looking up all of these different words and dubious was one of them. So anyway, that's my that's why I like that word when I hear it. It just takes me back to those times. So now let's hear, uh, let's read a little further here. 
This is adding to the counter narrative. Some prominent XRP community members have started challenging these unverified claims. All right, we're not going to drop names here, but these are respectable individuals asking reasonable questions, in my humble opinion. Yeah, you know, listen, I'm just, I'm staying right down the middle. That, it, what happens with Gary Gensler is all I need is for whatever occurs to end up where we defeat the SEC. That's it. That's it. That's all I'm looking forward to. All right, so now let's move on here. Okay, so now we're going to get to a little bit of XLM news. A very good, a very good and interesting connection here. I'm telling you, they're on to something big as Stellar and the people aren't seeing it. And it's so, the information on XLM and Stellar is so suppressed. They're keeping it quiet. You tell me. They got all these big things going on. And yet, you don't hear it on any of the mainstream media. Even Ripple makes it to mainstream media. Algorand even has interviews on mainstream media, but they, they keep Stellar very, very quiet. They're working with the United Nations, very quiet. They get calls from the White House, very quiet. They're working with Franklin Templeton, very quiet. Come on now. Something is wrong here in a good way. They don't want people knowing about it, but I could be wrong. I only speak for myself. I'm holding Stellar. I'm a long-term term holder of Stellar. Don't worry. We're going to get to the information, but bear with me. So I don't speak for everybody. You got to make up your own mind on these things, but check this out. Tell me this is not strategic. So this tweet here is going to lead into an article that I got, that I was reading today. It says here from Danell Dixon. It says, "Woot, all right. Proud to see at Stellar Orgs at a mean a mean heart. My apologies if I pronounce pronounce that name wrong. A mean heart." Named a subcommittee member to the CFTC advisory group. But wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. See, that's that's just a connector piece. That's one piece of the puzzle. Let's go here to this article. I hope I have it up here. <laughs> Who else is on that committee? Who else? The new digital assets panel at the CFTC. Let's make sure that it's the, it's the same one. CFTC advisory group. CFTC's global markets. Advisory Committee and Subcommittees announced new members and leadership of the CFTC's Global Markets Advisory Committee and Subcommittees. Okay, let's go back to that article now. Now, look who look, look at everybody who's grouping up at the CFTC. So we are already in deep with Caroline D. Pham, one of the one of the leaders at the CFTC. This article here from Daily Hoddle says executives. From Franklin Templeton and BNY Mellon, co-chair the new digital assets panel at the CFTC. Now, who has Franklin Templeton been drooling over for the last two, three months? Stellar, even though people aren't hearing them, but I'm pretty sure the other companies are hearing them. Retail, no. Companies, yes. Yes, those stellar based wallets are going to be delicious. Oh my word. Oh my word. Did you see the other video when we covered the other chapter in one of the chapters about um, all these new things they did at Stellar and who they're working with recently? Oh, wait, wait, no. I was talking about that in the comment section, actually, with Ahmed, actually. There was a tweet they put out. We'll cover that another time. But let's scroll down here and read this little tidbit. So, Franklin Templeton, who loves Stellar, is. Now co-chairing this committee, top executives of two prime, uh, prominent financial institutions have been chosen to be co-chairs of the Com Commodity Futures Trading Commission's new digital assets panel. According to a new press release by the regulatory agency, Caroline Butler, the, the global head of digital assets at Banking Titan, BNY Mellon, and Sandy Call, the head of digital and industry advisory services at investment firm Franklin Templeton, will together serve as co-chairs of the new digital assets market subcommittee. Do you really believe that these two individuals, this one from Franklin Templeton and BNY Mellon, haven't talked about haven't talked about the the use of stellar blockchain by Franklin Templeton? You really believe that? I don't. I know they talked about it. Now whether BNY Mellon also begins to use stellar to some capacity, who knows? But 
at least they know about it if a conversation did take place. But let's continue on here. Says the announcement was made by CFTC Commissioner Caroline Pham, one of our people. I'm telling you, it's all coming together. Now things are moving slowly. Swatties are long term investments, but they're moving. But, but, but let's, let's keep going. And maybe, the, maybe this is nothing. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that I am. But let's keep going. It says in press release, Butler said BNY Mellon is committed to, quote, playing a leadership role in shaping the future of finance. The future of finance is utility coins. The bank coins mostly, mainly moving that major capital. In a recent interview, remember, even Fed now is, is having integrations with blockchains. Volante just passed Fed now testing. Volante, Ripple, XRP. Let's keep going. In a recent interview with Scott Melker, Franklin Templeton's call predicted that institutional investments will ultimately form a strong foundation for the digital asset space. A strong foundation means that trillions will be flowing into these assets. Oops, I smacked my, smacked my lamp over. Inst that trillions will be flowing into these assets. And once again, what is the blockchain that Franklin Templeton was drooling over? Stellar. What is one of the coins that's not talked about as a security almost anywhere? Almost anywhere. XLM. Oh, anyway, let's continue on here. Quote, it says, I think that you're starting to see that institutional interest. So once again, we got another company saying that institutions are beginning to take interest. You just had BlackRock say the same thing. Fidelity. Franklin Templeton. They're telling the people, they're letting them know that big money is coming, whether it's this this year, next year, who knows, but it's coming. And when it does, the prices will not stay where they are now for any of these top assets. It's not going to happen. Um, and I, and once again, I will put my opinion out there that the next true, true bull market, like we had last time where everything was, had the opportunity to explode, true bull market will be bigger, much bigger than the last bull market. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think I'm right. It says here, I think that they will come in each time the market falls and put a little bit more on. Every time it drops, they're buying it up. This is what they're saying. And put a little bit more on. And over time, that will start to create a good foundation for the markets. And then when the next bull run starts to occur and retail interest starts to build again, that institutional floor will be under the marketplace. I think that this is a cycle and we are at the at the part of the cycle that's actually super healthy for the long-term growth of the marketplace. They're telling because these institutions have staying power. I hope everybody listened to this point. I really do because this is this is huge information here. They're telling the people how the victory is going to come. Uh, They're not going to listen, though. That's OK. I'm going to make some money. Oh, yes, I'm going to make some money. Oh, um, so I'm going to stop right there. This is a great article here on daily daily dot com is on the front page. You want to check it out. Screenshot it. Save it. All right. So now we're going to move on to another article here. Little bit of Algorand news. So. Algorand has two things I want to cover today. This one here is a tweet from the Algorand Foundation. It says, welcome to mainnet X, X ballot. X ballot, the Dow revolution on hashtag Algorand begins today. X ballot is officially live on at Algorand mainnet. Social feeds, voting, governance, treasury tools, and account registrar in a single on-chain platform algorand just keeps getting better and better stronger and stronger i expect big things out of algorand in the future huge things in the next true bull market from algorand i just see them being one of the most dominant absolutely dominant not only bank coin blockchains but blockchains outright algorand does everything correctly their marketing is brilliant their team is strong they're respectful to everyone I mean, they're going to win. I don't care what's going on, what the SEC says. They can't stop this victory that we're going to have in, in the future, in my humble opinion. That's just how I feel. So now let's move on to this next little piece here. All right. 
Keep doing a good job, Al Gran, if you're listening. Hopefully, you hear a little bit of this. Um, so now, they have a lot going on with Koi, Koi, Koi Banks again. And they've been doing a lot. They're dominating in Africa. Dominating in Latin America. This company is, is doing it big. Big things. For lack, for lack of a better word. <laughs> it says here. We're going to scroll down this article they had on Koi Banks. Uh, uh, it was linked to Koi, ba- Koi Banks Twitter. It says, quote, new financial products can be created for the population. For this reason, it is essential to learn about this new technology, to talk about the bank coins, and to be able to transmit the great possibilities that are available. Obviously, you're talking about Algorand, right? Our main market is the regulated one. Banking. Koi Bank. See, this is why I like Koi Banks. They stay focused. And when they come out, they have something big to say. But OK, let me calm down. Yes. Bring those banks right to us, Koi Banks. They already have a couple banks. Bring some more banks to us. Do that. It says banking, fintech, governments. Bring the government money right to us, right in these pockets here. I like this. Muy linda, mi gente. Bring that money. Governments. At Koi Banks, we believe that crypto, per se, is not a payment method. So you have to connect to the transactional rails of financial life. All that bridge currency talk. They know how to use Algorand, bridge currency, liquidity, glue everything together. This is why they're making these strategic movements. So they're concentrating on utility is what they're saying. This is all translated, by the way. All right. So some of the words might seem a little bit off because I'm, I'm reading it from I'm translating it. Right. But. They're looking at it as utility, not just the raw capital. Although we'll benefit from the raw capital, they're looking at it as as a, a, a tool. And the way that they've been using it at Koi Banks is absolutely brilliant. Listen, go to Algorand's uh, Twitter and then you'll see a Koi Banks article linked there or go to Koi Banks Twitter and then you'll see articles there. Give them a read. This company is doing major things. But let's keep going here. He says, quote, another quote. We are completely B2B company business to business. And what is that? Doing, I'm doing the Hulk Hogan. You remember the Hulk Hogan? Tri- tr- tr- trillions. I had to stutter on that one for emphasis. Trillions of dollars B2B. And they're saying this is what we do. We do B2B. Business to business. We are completely B2B company. Providers of state-of-the-art technology for financiers built on Algorand. Uh, says so it, it is a reality that, cost, that the cost of traditional banks in the transactional part can be cut by up to 70%, which allows them to expand their market. All right, we're going to stop there. Koi Banks keep doing a good job. Algorand, everything's looking good, in my humble opinion. We're going to make it through this tough time. We're going to make it through this little bear market, and we shall have victory. And if and when we have victory, my humble opinion, not financial advice, there will be a glorious, glorious future. That's just how I feel. All right. So now we're going to end off, if I can find it, we're going to end off with a little bit of gold news here. Appreciate every single one of you being here, every single person out there. Um, shout out to Bo Rabbit. I'm trying to give shout outs to everybody today. Show everybody some love that I can remember off the top of my head. Shout out to Bo Rabbit. Shout out to, to uh, uh, Black Rivers. Um, my, my brain is blank right now, but you all know I have the greatest of respect and love for you all. Appreciate you out there. All right. So now. This article is from Kitco.com and it is titled why you should always own gold and silver CPM groups. Jeffrey Christian discusses the importance uh, uh, of including physical gold and silver as part of an investor's precious metals profile. Jeff also discusses CPM groups and intermediate trade recommendations, as well as the probability of various economic and political events affecting price of the price of gold and silver. Let's scroll down here. I want to skip this little part here. So I want to say this. He says, uh, with U.S. Independence Day, I'll read this little piece. U.S. Independence Day around the corner. Jeff concludes that with some interesting, often overlooked economic and political factors that lead Samuel Adams to champion American independence. Okay, then it goes into some other stuff here. But what what they're trying to say is, (laughs) 
because of uncertainty in the world, it's good to have gold because it maintains its value. It's a good store of value. Also, the gold price obviously can go up given geopolitical factors. Um, a lot of uh, different banks are having problems, liquidity issues, debt issues. Um, they may have to be absorbed. A lot of them are losing customers by the thousands because of various issues. So more and more people are retreating to gold. If some of those banks have to go down, and it's not just in the in the West where they're having a, a variety of issues that could cause a lot of banks to go under, go out of business, or be absorbed by bigger banks, this could happen globally, right? A lot of people will retreat to gold and silver to protect their value. So you know, listen, it's always good to have a little bit of gold and silver, but that's just my opinion. What people do, that's up to them. But I'll say this: there was an article. Um, I don't know if we read that article on the channel recently, or I just saw it personally, like on my own time, I mean, uh, where there was a reputable company that was saying that the world might be moving to a global gold back system once again. And it was a very interesting article. And I, we've been talking about that for a while because of the BRICS nation common currency, their common currency. If their common currency is backed by gold, all these fiat currencies would be heavily damaged. Why would I want to interact with a fiat currency? That's backed by literally nothing. And, and yes, I know a lot of people throw a lot of different things. Oh, it's backed by the military might, backed by protection. It's backed by oil, which that oil, that whole oil thing for the global reserve currency is almost over. Especially with uh, OPEC countries taking umbrage to what the West is doing. So they're cutting a lot. So anyway, you would need to back your currency with something. Then also, once again, let me throw in there that global central bank dollar reserves is at an all-time low. Look it up. And global gold reserves are at an all-time high. There's a reason for that, right? So, I mean, yeah, sure. The price of gold and silver definitely can go up. Silver's price is highly suppressed, right? I love silver. I love silver and gold. I love platinum also. I do like copper. I don't have any copper. I said that before, though. Uh, I reiterate things from time to time. But, um, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. It's, it's, I'll, oh, this is what I wanted to say, and I'll close out with this. I think diversification is a great thing. Like, for instance, I know a lot of people may have only one bank coin. I hold all the bank. I'm deep in all the bank coins just in case. That way, if, no matter which ones go off, I win. That's how I feel. But I also think that diversifying across um, asset classes and, and different things is important as well. Having some crypto is good. Having some well-placed stocks is good. Um, having some real estate is also interesting, right? Having maybe a few RP. I'm not deep in art. Any, not anymore. Not anymore. But so having some art pieces can be good. Um, some very high value art pieces that can move and get you a profit in the future. Act as a nice store of value, of course. Um, having some art pieces is good. Maybe having some farmland is also good. Like, so, you know, it, 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 it just depends on you. You have to make those decisions for yourself. Obviously, know what it is that you like to be into. Um, and uh, so, but I think that diversification is is very good. You know, a lot of people feast on tea. They've been feasting on tea bills. In bonds and such, you know, it, it just depends on on how they're trying to make their capital, right? T bills and the bonds, did the, the uh, did the yield on bonds did, that just went up a little bit by like a little bit? I think I read an article on that. I'm not sure. My apologies, everyone. But so so, I'm pro diversification. I don't like to, for lack of a better word, put all my eggs in one basket. So now that you have that information. What are you going to do with it? I got to go around the microphone now. I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.